Now we shall discuss about the importance of manufacturing. As I just now explained for you what is manufacturing and what are the importance of manufacturing industries in a country's development. First of all, in any country, before understanding the importance of manufacturing industries, we generally categorize the countries basing on the people getting employed in different different sectors. The primary sector, the secondary sector and the territory sector. If they are working in the primary sector and the most of the people are working in this first sector like the basic sector like agriculture, farming, fishing, quarrying, all these people, these people's life is insecure. These people's income is unstandardized. These people may get huge profits one time, sometimes they may fall down into zero. So this kind of fluctuating life will be present in the primary industry sector or primary sector. When we go on to the secondary sector, in the secondary sector we have small scale industries, large scale industries, medium scale industries. All these come under the category of uh, secondary or this secondary sector. So in this sector, they will have a standardized salary structure. They will have a systematic payment for them. So there is no question of up and down. They will have the basic lifestyle which is equal in almost all the times. They do not have any seasonal effects. So moving on to the third sector that is like the service sector where you have huge profits and the lifestyle will be extra luxurious and comforts. So that is called third sector. So primary, secondary and service sector. In which country more number of people are employed in the primary sector, that country is called undeveloped country or underdeveloping country. When we talk about the people, those who are employed like 30% in agriculture and 40% in the secondary sector, then it is called a developing country. When it is 30 and 40 ratio in a secondary and the service sector and less than 20 to 10 percent in the primary sector then that country is called a developed country for example if you take usa in usa the people coming under the category of primary sector may be from 5 to 10 percent in australia it is 5 to 8 percent in uk and britain where you have 5 to 10 percent so these percentages will determine whether the country is developing or not now when a country's people are employed in the secondary sector where our manufacturing industries fall in that, then automatically the country will be categorized into the developed country or the developing country rather than from underdeveloped to below developed country. So first of all, we need to understand what is the importance of manufacturing industries. Then we can understand how can it contribute for the country's development on a larger scale. Let us see here. What is the importance of manufacturing industries? I just made a list of all the important points which are required for us. First one, it is the backbone of development. As I just now explained for you, any country will be categorized into the underdeveloped, developing and then developed country basing on the people getting employed into that one. So, a country is to be branded as a developed country or there is a development going on in that country then the manufacturing industry should be very strong then only that country will be categorized into developing country or developed country next important point is when this is a backbone acting the next important point is we have it reduces the dependency on agriculture moving on to the first point it has to be branded as a developed country the number of people working in the primary sector like agriculture, farming, quarrying, fishing should be very less. There should not be more number of people working in these fields where agriculturing is going on, farming is going on, field work is going on or oiling, oil mining, quarrying or fishing activities which are insecure life activities. These should be very less number of people employed. So automatically if we have development in the industrial side more number of people will be shifting from the agriculture side to the developmental side. Why more number of people are on the agricultural side in India? We all know that in India we have 6.4 lakh villages. Out of the 6.4 lakh villages, nearly 6 lakh villages are 
hundred and ten percent dependent on agriculture only. So in India, nearly seventy percent of people depend truly on agriculture. So we need to shift that seventy percent towards the development side. That's why it reduces the dependency on agriculture. Third major point is it also exports. When once the industry start to make some products, and if the product is very valuable and it's very attractive, it can meet the requirements of the international market. Definitely, that product can be exported to other countries. Once the product is exported from our country to the other country, then it automatically will fetch us some foreign income to our country. It gets some extraordinary income for our country. Any country needs the foreign reserves. in order to maintain their economic balance so manufacturing industries also play a very vital role in fetching foreign exchange for our country then fourth point what we have is it tries to eradicate unemployment we all know that in india the two major problems what we have is one is unemployment second one is poverty because of unemployment people fall down to poverty if there is a possibility of getting an opportunity definitely people would try to achieve that opportunity and work hard and eliminate their poverty from the state of unemployment to employment status so that's why it is very very important to develop the manufacturing industries so that more number of the unemployed people will get a chance to work somewhere and to get some employment benefits and to stop themselves from falling into poverty next it reduces unemployment and poverty the next major point is it also brings down the regional disparities what is a regional disparity for example we all know that india is a land where we have diversified physical settings we have coastal plains and the same time we have interior lands we have hilly regions we have plateau lands and everything so generally nearby the coastal plains means where we have the flow of the river water where we have the possibility of getting water there there agriculture is possible there you can do agriculture and you can perform some activity instead of being unemployed but when it comes to the interior lands where there is no agriculture available possibility because there is a scarcity of water when there is scarcity of water automatically it brings us to a situation where they cannot perform or do agriculture when they cannot perform and do agriculture if you are able to set up an industry there when there is an agriculture possibility people are getting employed in agriculture when there is no possibility people are not able to do anything there then people start to migrate from that places and that region becomes completely dislocated people there so it becomes a dry land instead of that if you can establish any industry there where there is a possibility of getting employment opportunity for the people where in agriculture you have opportunity naturally because there is availability of water on the coastal lands the interior lands also will get the possibility because of the industries when once the industries are established people will get the employment opportunities there once they get employed they start to settle down in that particular region and that region also will flourish like equally with the coastal plain so the regional disparity lack of some physical nature of like water or something that can also be subsided by having an establishing a manufacturing industry at a particular place where there is low possibility of doing agriculture so in this way we can reduce the regional disparities also and the countries which are transforming the raw materials into very valuable products that countries nowadays they are able to earn huge and huge profits which ultimately results in the prosperous state of a country the countries which are now able to transform the raw materials into the valuable products by using their technological skills and understanding on the product they are able to earn huge and huge profits which ultimately results for the prosperity of the country and development of the nation on a long stand so manufacturing industries also help to countries to prosper
on a larger scale and it's not that only uh, it prospers only the country which are not following agriculture even for agriculture also the industries will cooperate with the agriculture or will be helping agriculture to become better an example for this prior to this we used to have a canals which are supplying water for the irrigation facilities but nowadays you have pipelines we have motors to bring the water from far off places at a instant speed and getting everything possible so agriculture also was made into a profitable stand because of the invention of these pipelines this motors and all so along with agriculture industries also will go hand in hand adding advantage to each other agriculture will add advantage to the industries industries will add advantage to the agriculture so it's not two exclusive waves like agriculture is going in a separate way and industries are going in a separate way but it is hand in hand nature of the industries as well as agriculture to go together and finally cherish the country on a large scale and last but not the least once the agriculture is given the boost by the industries agriculture started to produce in large profits which is actually providing a boom not only for the non agricultural aspirants but also for agriculture and automatically the living standard of the farmers has also increased in the past two decades that's how the manufacturing industries are contributing on a very large scale for the development of the country in particular and also to every individual in general now moving on to understand how can this be a global phenomena when an industry is starting to produce something definitely it has to produce on a very very large scale when it is producing in a very large scale it has to maintain the standard of the quality also we all know that today we are in a global village where every country is having a competition with the neighboring countries not just aside to them but also the countries which are thousands of kilometers away from them so today the technology has brought the entire world into a situation where we are considered in competition with the global village of the entire planet so we need to make any product which can sustain to the international standard then automatically you get the opportunity to market your product in the international market in various countries and that would result us to have a global standardization and also to attain global remarkable achievement on a larger scale so any manufacturing industry should be have to maintain the power of quality in regards to any product whatever they make equal to that of the international standards then only we can achieve our best so in short the manufacturing industries contribute a lot for the development of the country the backbone it is considered as a backbone of the development it reduces the dependency on agriculture it it gets exports done to the other countries in return we get fetching the foreign exchange for us and then it eradicates untouchability and saves us from falling into poverty brings down regional disparities countries which are now using raw materials into finished products are able to earn huge and huge profits resulting in the getting the achievement of prosperous state of the country and agriculture industries move hand in hand well as the others give boost also for agriculture industries other industries are supporting agriculture industry agriculture industry is supporting the other industries so they both go hand in hand only thing what we need to remember is whenever any industry is trying to make a product that should always keep in mind that we are in the global competition and we should maintain the quality par with that of the international standard that would definitely give an added advantage for the products in the international market if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbse syllabus